Pin Duo Duo is one of the fastest growing stocks in all the stock market. But what we have here is a lesson of how dangerous overvaluation can be. Even though this company is growing extremely fast, you can see that it became excessively valued far ahead of what fundamentals would warrant or dictate. And then once that happened, the stock price had crashed and collapsed over the next year and a half or so by more than 80%. Valuation matters, and it matters a lot. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. Once again, it's my extreme pleasure to welcome you to another subscriber request Tuesday video for you. Now, I've got 25 names for you this week. And again, I want to remind you, this is going to be a very high-level overview. I'm not going to be able to get you know, into great depth on any of these companies, but I do want to give you some insights on what each of these companies look like. And I'm going to tell you, you really come up with some doozies this week, you know, what you guys are looking at, what you're interested in. So I'll try to go f through them as quickly as I can. My goal is to give you a good perspective of what the merits of the stock is or what the detriments to, you know, the investment opportunities the stocks have. So, you know, remember, I, these are not stocks that I've generally researched thoroughly. They're just stocks that you've asked to see. And so I'm giving you a quick glance, pre-research, if you will, into what these companies look like. So let's start with the very first one, which is Agree Realty Corporation, which is a real estate investment trust. Now, I've been asked recently, how do you evaluate a REIT? Well, you know, a REIT is valued differently. You use operating cash flow or free cash flow to value a REIT. And with the FastGraph fundamental software tool, we automatically default into those metrics if you pick either free cash flow or operating cash flow. So number one, you can see what the stock looks like. Adjusted operating earnings do not give you a fair picture because there's a lot of reasons for that when you're doing with the REIT. So what you want to do is you want to go into operating cash flow. Now, what I want you to notice here is we're looking at what is now called funds from operations when you're looking at a REIT. And I'm going to shorten this time frame to 10 years because this gives you a clear picture of what the REIT, this particular REIT has looked like. Now, this is a retail REIT. It looks pretty good. It apparently did better during uh, even COVID than most REITs did. The stock price fell, but the company continued to perform fairly well. But I do consider this REIT overvalued, and I think it's been overvalued. It does offer a 4% yield. It only offers an FFO yield of like 5.36%. It's trading at 18.66 times blended price to FFO. I would like to see the stock down into the 50s category for it to be attractive to me. But anyway, this is a re reality. You can also look at it from funds from operations. Some analysts prefer free cash flow or funds from operations when you're looking at REITs. And, and you still get the same picture. The stock looks slightly overvalued on that basis. Anyway, that's your agree reality. The next stock I'm going to look at is the Chinese, you know, powerhouse Alibaba. Alibaba was trading, you know, at very high levels, and it actually became what looked like fairly undervalued. I don't actually have calculated a growth rate here for this time frame because what's happened is I think this is quite interesting and fascinating. Once the Chinese government kind of got involved and all the risk of some of the politics associated with these big Chinese names occurred, you know, Alibaba's stock price collapsed and analysts quit giving forecasts. You know, it's, of course, like rats leaving a burning building. When you need them most, they're not there. So we really don't have any forecasts. However, I would suggest that if I'm looking at Alibaba and you can get over the risk of the politics, based on a price to sales, this stock looks like it's cheaper than it's ever been. So if you're an aggressive investor looking for long-term growth, you might want to take a closer look at Alibaba. But again, you're kind of on your own. You're going to have to dig up your own estimates of what the stock might be. Billy Billy is another Chinese stock, and this is the one I featured in the beginning, and I did want to show you, you know, this company really has not ever made any money, all right, and yet the market bid it up to just astronomical valuations and levels, you know, and you look at it from a, from several different metrics, you can see that it was just so far ahead of its fundamentals, it really made no sense. You know, there was losses being generated all along. Now, the only merit that I could see in investing in this company was sales growth, which I showed you in the beginning. The sales growth has been powerful at over 50%. And the forecast sales growth is to continue at around 24 or 25%. 
and there's no long-term growth rate. So this particular stock does have a lot of growth potential. And once again, if you're comfortable with you know investing in Chinese companies, this would be the time to buy this stock in contrast to back here when the valuations were trading at just astronomical 28 times sales, which is just you know, enormously high. So there's Billy Billy. It does look attractive today. You asked and I showed it to you. Baytex Energy is a good classic example of what's going on in the energy sector. You know, the company was never really a great investment, in my opinion. The dividend was always spotty, but their earnings growth has really collapsed and they did eliminate their dividend back here in 2015. Now, in recent years, the stock has been performing okay from an operating standpoint. And it does look, based on forecast, like it could be slightly undervalued. But I would consider this, to say the very least, a speculative opportunity. So anyway, there's Baytex Energy for you. Citigroup is an interesting story, like most of these major money center banks were. You know, they participated in the 2008-2009 financial disaster to an extreme level. They really had gotten overboard with lending the money and doing collateralized mortgage obligations and so on. And you can see this huge collapse in earnings and huge collapse in stock prices. The stock price fell almost 97%. Now, since that time, for the last, you know, 10 years or so, the stock is performing reasonably well. It does offer a 4% dividend. It's very inexpensive at five times earnings, has a very strong earnings yield of 18.77%. And so I think if you're ever going to look at a company, you know, forgive these guys for what they did in 2008, well, actually prior to that, but, you know, that collapsed in 2008 and 2009, now would be the time. But I do find it alarming that analysts are not looking for very strong long-term growth in this company. And that'd be something you'd want to research thoroughly and, you know, take a much harder look at, you know, before you actually laid your money down. The next one is Comcast Corp. Now, I find this so interesting in terms of valuation. You can see when the stock was really overvalued back here that it really did nothing. It actually performed negative performance for seven, eight or nine years. Now, the company did begin to grow and it started to grow at about 20 percent a year. And on that basis, the company looks very inexpensive today. If I shorten this time frame, the growth rate has slowed down to about 12.7%. The stock will look overvalued to me last year. It is now attractively valued. And if you look at it from a forecasting point of view, analysts are expecting about 12.5% growth over the next couple of years. And long-term growth will be about 17%. So I think now would be a great time if Comcast is the kind of company you're looking for. It's a very high quality company, A minus rated, offers a 2.58% dividend yield. You can buy it at 12.5 roughly times blended PE ratio. So I think this is one that you might want to look at for a long-term total return. The company is positioned to generate double digit rates of return over the next two, three, four, or five years. So Comcast looks very attractive to me finally after being an overvalued stock for most of the last recent history. Of course, Civic, now this is a company that's involved in, I guess, rehabilitation of prisoners. I, I don't like stocks like this. You can see how important the company's operating results are by looking at Core Civic. The company's earnings, you know, were kind of stable and then they kind of flattened out. The company paid a little dividend, then they cut their dividend, pays no dividend right now. The stock does look, you know, theoretically inexpensive based on a 12 P.E. ratio and an 8 percent earnings yield. But I think there's a lot of, you know, suspect in what this company is going to be able to do going forward. So anyway, that's what Core Civic looks like. One reason I went ahead and showed this stock was because it really shows how important a company's operating results are to how it performs as a long term investment. This is one of my favorite growth stocks, Fiserv. And finally, after several years of what I consider to be very lofty valuations. This data processing and outsourcing company has come into what I would consider attractive valuation. You can, you know, the stock is expected to grow at 15%. You can buy it at about a 16 PE. Earnings yields a little light, but it is growing over 15% a year. Long-term growth be about the same 14 to 15%. So, you know, this is the first time in maybe six years you'd had an opportunity to buy Fiserv. 
I consider this an extremely high quality company. It is a growth stock. It doesn't pay a dividend. It would be for those who are looking for a good growth situation long term. So Pfizer finally looks like it's interesting. Fidelity National is a property and casualty insurer. I went ahead and showed it. I could show you just unbelievable amounts of, you know, property and casualty insurers, life insurers, bank stocks, financials. Financials are inexpensive right now. I would pick and choose if I were you, but you can certainly buy these at attractive valuations with very high dividend yields. And, you know, you buy low, sell high. That's the whole idea. And I think you'd be able to do that. And Fidelity is certainly a very good property and casualty insurer. Triple B investment grade rating. Geo Group, security and alarm systems. This stock is, what I can say about this stock is it's real cheap. But this is simply not the kind of company that I'm interested in investing in. It's really difficult to see how, you know, this company can grow. You know, but it does have its allure. Now, it did generate a lot of dividend income for a while. It's eliminated the dividend. If you look at the long-term performance, you know, it generated, you know, pretty strong dividend income over the period of time, almost $55,000 from January of 02. But again, now they've eliminated the dividend. And so, you know, it's one that I would be very cautious with. If you're looking to speculate, Geo Group might be an interesting one to take a look at. Gilead's a fascinating story. You know, Gilead, we all know the cure for hepatitis C. It resulted in an enormous you know, burst of their profits. Their profits jumped over 300% in 2014, followed by 56% in 2015. But then once they've cured all the hepatitis, you know, the, there was no real sales going on anymore other than incremental new people. And the earnings collapsed. And, you know, the company is now, you know, looking like it's not going to grow very fast going forward. But it is very inexpensive. It only trades at eight and a half times earnings. So, you know, if you look at this company from the standpoint of price to sales, sales have been really relatively flat over the last, you know, several years. So, you know, that's something to think of. Again, what this has got going for it, it has a high yield, a good dividend record, and it's real inexpensive. The question is, you know, is that enough reason for you to want to invest in it? I would recommend doing your homework and your due diligence here. HCA Healthcare owns hospitals and other um, healthcare facilities. It's a very good company, only has a double B plus rating. It did cut their dividend during COVID, which was not understandable. The stock is very inexpensive at 12 times earnings, modest dividend yield of 1%, earnings yield of 8%. You know, the company is forecast to grow at about 7%. And if it traded at a normal 15 PE ratio, this would give you a you know 15 to 20% rate of return out over the next two to three years. Long-term growth is still also expected to be about 7%. And that would give you double digits as well. So this is one that, you know, you might want to take a closer look at if you're looking again for total return with a dividend kicker. Hymax Technologies, semiconductor company. It had a very big profit surge here in light of, you know, the scarcity of the automobiles. It does a lot of navigation devices and chips for the uh, semiconductors for that industry. However, analysts are expecting earnings to level off and get back to a more normalized situation. So there could be a lot of bad news facing you in the future if you took a look at this. Once again, it's only trading at three times earnings and has a 2.76% dividend yield. So something like this could have very strong speculative appeal. But again, I don't know that I would necessarily call this investment grade. But it's an interesting opportunity. Metafast, you know, multi-level marketing, direct marketing. Some people like it, some people don't. It's really strung together a great long-term track record. It does offer almost a 4% dividend yield. It's very inexpensive. You know, the company's forecast to continue growing at double-digit rates going forward. I don't get a long-term forecast. So, you know, if you're looking for a good dividend yield in a little bit more aggressive company with some real strong upside, Metafast might be a choice that you might want to take a closer look at. Moving right along here, looking at Merck. Merck is very interesting for a couple of reasons. Big Pharma really had really a kind of a slowdown in growth for many, many years growing up. But but notice, you know, the long-term growth rate was 5% here. I shortened this to 10 years. It's up to 9%. I shortened it to 8 up to 11%. And it's being forecast to grow at 12% going forward. Long-term growth, trendline growth even higher at 14% growth. 
So I think Merck looks very attractive here, 2.99%. Dividend yield, 7% earnings yield, which is attractive. Blended PE of 14.20. And it's got an A-plus, you know, financial statement. So I might really want to take a look at Merck here. It's a If you're looking for above average dividend income relative to interest rates, but also some growth potential, Merck, you know, looks real attractive as a major pharmaceutical here to me. Navios Maritime, Containers, I just don't like this industry. It has this great track record because of all the dividends. Look at these dividends that it paid, you know, back in the day. I'm not even sure why. I've never really studied this company. This is just not my cup of tea. It may be for you because the one thing I'll say, it's trading at less than two times earnings. It has an incredible earnings yield. Earnings are forecast to stay stable, relatively speaking, but not necessarily grow. So, you know, this would be a speculation if you wanted to. I'm just not sure, you know, what the investment merit behind this company is. And of course, with supply chains and everything else, what they are, it might be an interesting speculation. This is the spinoff from Merck. Everyone's asked me about it. You know, we don't have enough history to really tell. I will say this, no analyst is really considering much in the way of growth. The long-term growth rate is expected to be negative. The next year is supposed to be down then followed by some, you know, modest growth after that. But I do want to point out, like a lot of spinoff situations, this company is carrying over 115% debt. And companies like Merck, when they spin off companies like this, a lot of times they try to clean their house. So, you know, the only thing, again, I'll say is trading at less than six times earnings with a high earnings yield and a pretty high dividend yield. But we don't have enough history here to really talk about that. And this is Pin Duo Duo I talked about. I think this is such a great lesson in overvaluation and hype and hysteria, how the stock, you know, people get all excited about stocks and really drive them up. And then, you know, we hit some political issues and so on over the last year and a half or so, and the stock has really collapsed. And frankly, I don't think it's really necessarily cheap enough, but if you were going to buy it, it makes a heck of a lot more sense to buy it now than it did earlier. They're not giving any long-term growth love here at all, only looking at 2% long-term growth, but looking at pretty strong growth over the next couple of years. Again, there's a lot of politics involved here as well. But, you know, I do want you to notice how far this stock is correct in just a really relatively short period of time. Pfizer, very similar to Merck. As I shorten the time frame, you know, I get this big jump from the, uh, I guess it was from the COVID vaccine, if you will. But, you know, forecasting, it's, we're expected to see some down years coming forward. I like to point that out because, you know, what you're facing, you got a nice 3% dividend yield. It's only trading at 10 times earnings. And it's probably a good investment here. And I actually am long this stock, at least temporarily. But I will tell you, facing this kind of future, you want to really be on your toes when you're investing in a stock like this. You know, analysts are expecting long-term growth to be minus 2%. But part of that is normalizing from some aberrantly high earnings, you know, that came as a result of the COVID pandemic. But again, this is one you'd want to be careful with because there's definitely pending bad news coming, apparently. Now, that may not come to pass, but that's something you should be cognizant of. This is a stock that I really like, Parker Hannafin Industrial Machinery. It's a classic dividend growth stock. Got a nice 2% dividend yield. You can see how the price follows the earnings of the company, and it's come into a really nice, attractive buy range. So this is one that I would say that if you're looking for a good dividend growth stock, you might want to take a closer look at this one. It's expected to give us some pretty decent growth over the next several years, and it's certainly a very high-quality company. So you might want to take a much closer look at this one. Shockwave Medical, a very interesting company, coronary artery disease and so on. It has a great deal of potential. It's one of the most chronic, you know, and serious health problems we have. But my problem with the Shockwave is the market, you know, has it just significantly overvalued relative to what I think the company's worth. Even if we look at price to sales, it's trading at, you know, over 30 times sales. Now, sales have been growing like a monster. There's no question about that but you're paying a real high premium, you know, relative to sales here. When you look at other, you know, metrics like EBITDA, it's expected to really have explosive growth. So, you know, there is some investment allure here. From an earnings point of view, it doesn't, you know, appear to make a lot of money, but I'd be careful with this one. You know, it's trading at over 300 times earnings. So, you know, that should tell you something, but it is a very exciting, you know, looking company. And it's the one that if the market did give us a big correction, it might be worth looking at. 
Tencent Music Entertainment, another Chinese story with all the politics. You know, we had these collapses. They were overpriced. They're now trading at a price that at least is in line with their expected growth. So, you know, but negative growth going forward. There's just so much uncertainty in these Chinese stocks that I've decided that I think it's, you know, there's better places to go elsewhere. You know, you see the same situation even occurring with Alibaba. Next one I want to look at is Texas Roadhouse Grill. This is a decent restaurant chain. They had to close during COVID. They usually are in standalone buildings. The company has grown its business very nicely, except for the COVID. It also grew its dividend. It does offer about a 2.5% dividend, but I just think the stock is too expensive. But you might want to keep your eye if it got you know, down here into the $60 range that I might say it's worth taking a shot at, taking a look at. But at today's prices, I still think it's overpriced, even though it's had a really nice correction. Uber, you know, Uber's been down a great deal. This is another one of these sales stories. You know, these sales are just growing like a weed. It's trading at about, you know, normal price to sales have been about five times sales. Trading at two times sales now. So again, this could be an interesting speculation for those who are interested in growth. You know, you might want to take a stab at it here, but it's certainly a lot better by here. From an earnings point of view, not so hot. From a cash flow point of view, I would say it's also overpriced, but at least cash flows are expected to, you know, get ahead of the stock price here. So that's what Uber looks like today after correcting. It still might have a ways to go, however. And then Zim Integrated Shipping Services. This was a you know, I don't even know what to think about this stock, so I went ahead and drew it because the recent growth has been staggering, all right? And if you look at the performance of this company, it's generated, you know, 17000 in dividends in its short history. It's given you a 5-to-1 growth, a 7-to-1 total rate of return, over a 364% compound growth rate. But look what the future is expected to hold. That could just all simply go away and, and you know, analysts have a, pretty good consensus on this, that it's going to have negative growth going forward. So even though the current PE is less than two and it's yielding this crazy 58% dividend yield, we really don't know what's in store for it in the future. So it would be an interesting speculation to say the least. I think you'd have to go in and do a lot of research now that they did do a deal with Danos Corporation. You know, Zim Integrated is undervalued by this analyst. You know, why did integrated shipping go down today? You know, there's all kinds of controversy and news. I just think this is the kind of company that, you know, you'd have to put it in the speculative camp. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the stocks you asked for. Like I warned you in the beginning, you guys came up with some really interesting stocks to look at um, this particular week, and I tried to cover them as best I could in the time I you know, think is reasonable here. If you like the video, give me a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And take a look at Fastgrass. Fastgrass gives you so much insight into the type of companies you're buying, the valuations you'd have to be paying for them if you were to be interested in investing in them. And you can do this all at a glance. It's so easy to use. I wouldn't invest in stocks without it. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.